to your time at Nottingham Forest, like what are your memories and experiences of being at Nottingham Forest as we go into the Nottingham Forest Legends event later this year? Uh, for me, uh, Nottingham born, so um, you know, as a kid, watch Forest for six, seven, eight years um, when they weren't very good, really, in the early seventies. And then obviously Brian Cruff arrived, and I was playing local football at that time. I got spotted by Forest. The scouts were out there, um, and in 1975-6, I was 13 years of age, trialling on a in, a in a school holiday at Forest when Brian Cruff had just arrived. So. Um, I basically joined the club when he did, really. Uh, so, you know, as a kid, you're thinking, well, you know, I'll give it a go because there's, there's no guarantees in football. Everyone, everyone knows that. It's, it's a tough profession. Um, and probably it, it did help me that he arrived when I arrived at the same time. Um, I joined the actual staff when I was leaving school at 16 and 79, and that was the summer that Gary Mills won the, sorry, he didn't play in the first final. No, he second. got a medal for it though, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Um, so 79 I joined as an apprentice, I cleaned the boots of John Robertson every day, and Peter Shilton, and Kenny Burns, and Larry Lloyd. Um, cleaned the baths out, the big communal bath, cleaned the toilets out for two years, which was part of the right routine back then. Nowadays they don't do that then. Do you think they should? Do you think that's a good, humbling know, experience? It's certainly humbling, yeah. Um, good or bad, I don't know. Everybody. It's life, life changes, and it's, that's the way it is nowadays. But uh, two years doing that, two years as a, as a young professional in the reserve team in the old central league with, with old professionals every week, which was a great, great grounding. Um, so, um, and Brian Clough obviously was there all from when I was 16 to 20, and you know, then you get your first pro contract, and you, you're still looking at players ahead of you or European Cup winners. So. Um, my good fortune probably was to get a chance, and, and Clough, to be fair, gave you a chance. As if you, if you were young enough and half decent, he'd give you a chance. Um, he bought three players, uh, I think in about 1980, 81, Justin Fashionu, Ian Wallace and Peter Ward, for something like in those days, three million, which was a lot of money in, the, in those mm -hmm. days. And in general, all three failed. Um, so the club was skinned. The kids were the next port of call, they were given a chance. We were all thrown in basically all my era, probably about seven or eight players. Um, quite a few survived and had decent careers. Uh, obviously a few left by the wayside and weren't seen again. Um, and I got in and the next three years I was a regular, so it, it took off quickly really. But you know, you, you never know. You never know until, you, until my third game was Liverpool away, you know, I scored two in the cop. Until you get in with the big boys, then you, you, you just don't know where you're at. Are, are you compared to these guys? Because Liverpool are then European champions with Sunes playing and Dalglish and Rush up from, you know, but that was three games in as a 19 year old kid. So um, you, grow up, you grow up quickly. In football, but, you grow yeah. up very, very quickly. But if you put Mark and Graham Sunes, you grow up very quickly, don't well, you? Fact, that might be fair, I played right wing. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I kept out of his way. But I would say about people about Sunes, he did put it about and he mm -hmm. was tough and he would do people now and again. Because in those days you could, you know, voice players did it to other players, but wonderful player, won everything with Liverpool, fantastic player. Um, but it is, it was, it was, a, it was a, an era at Forest where, uh, with Clough, that um, you could be given a chance, you, but you had to be ready. Otherwise, you wouldn't suffer falls gladly. You might get three or four or five games, and then you're out. Um, so yeah, it was. Um, I think all kids in that era were under Clough. Obviously, he had the power. He was a manager. Um, he could make or break your career, and, and he knew that. Nowadays, the players have all the power. He's all, he's all swung the other way around. But um, an experience to be someone you knew you were around somebody of um, of stature who would go down the history books as being a great manager, um, eccentric at times, nasty with people, at other times the praise was gushing over the top, but. Um, Somebody you never really knew. I never knew where I was with him sometimes. You never knew what mood he would be in. You could never totally relax around him. I think he liked that, the fact that you were always on edge with him. Um, and somebody who you knew my last year at Forest, I've, I've been there on and off for 10 years. In my last year at Forest, a kid came from Ireland called Roy Keane, who I'd never heard of. Um, Turned out right, didn't it? Well, I, I, played, I played three or four games in this the first season or the first games of that season uh, I got flu uh, to pull out against Liverpool away he, he threw Keenan from absolutely nowhere as an 18 year old kid he did all right um, and he stayed in and end of that season I was moved on so you know he was ruthless once you had your time with you he moved you on quickly 
Um, thank you for your time, and then it was long live Roy Keane. I love the testament to Brian Clough that to this day people are still talking about him passionately and enthusiastically. I mean, obviously we're here in Nottinghamshire, but the legacy he's left is going to live forever, isn't it? That's personality, really. Yeah. That's what he's. I suppose Mourinho is a bit like him nowadays, but still, I think when you are that powerful as he was in the seventies and eighties, uh, you know he runs a, a top football club from top to bottom. Um, controversial, like to be in the papers, like to say outlandish things, like to be somebody people talked about, and you know. Um, but at the end of the day, he had to produce, and his teams over 18 years at Forest, well, you, you see, since, since he left and, and before him, there's been nothing like it at Forest. But to win four League Cups, get to an FA Cup final, and win two Champions League, I think any Forest fan who's um, knowledgeable and, and, and fair minded will think that that will never happen again at Forest. No, that's incredible. So, um, yeah, that's why his legacy will, it's 40 years ago now, that's why his legacy will continue because. Uh, for people of that era, and even for, even for the younger players, uh, people at Forest and the fans, um, who can't quite grasp that, and obviously they've never seen it, never been, never smelt it, you know, they probably never will, but I think at times they get a bit bored of all that, and they want, because it's their era now, it's, it's a new team, it's a new broom and all that, but um, he was just a one-off character that, uh, you know, so I, I had the good fortune to have 10 years with in my career.